Hello Year 10s and welcome back to Term 3. Um, unfortunately we find ourselves in a bit of a predicament with um, COVID-19 and just the arrangements of everything. Uh, so right now we're going to be doing some online learning. Um, so well, hopefully you'll be able to see um, today's uh, learning intention and success criteria. Hopefully we, sh we will be back together um, in class um, soon-ish. Um, but for the time being, this is what the setup should be looking like. We're going to, I'm going to be posting up videos for you guys to watch and then have a few questions for you guys to have a go at on your own. Um, the plan is so that, uh, you guys take photos of your work and upload it onto Google Classroom so I can check and just see how you're going with those questions. Um, so yes, that is the plan for this, uh, for the foreseeable future until the end of this particular lockdown period. So what we're doing is we're starting off a new topic called linear relationships. And what we need to do is actually we're going to be doing a bit of revision over some algebra stuff that we've looked at before, but also be looking at some uh, Cartesian plane stuff that you hopefully looked at a lot. We looked at last year, I believe, um, but also in years before as well. So that's what we're going to be looking at in today's lesson. So in today's lesson, by the end of today, we want to be able to recall how to plot points on a Cartesian plane and also draw, uh, fill in the table of values and then plot points from our table of values and then also be able to draw a straight line graph from a table of values. That's what we want to be able to do by to the end of today's lesson. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is just do a bit of recap on the Cartesian plane. Now, in years eight to eight, nine, and eight and nine last year and the year before, we looked at this particular thing called the Cartesian plane. And there's a few key features you need to be aware of with the Cartesian plane. First of all, a Cartesian plane is made up of two lines, a horizontal line and a vertical line that intersect at 90 degrees. And we have the specific names for this. So this line over here and this line over here. Hopefully you might remember from last year or the year before. The horizontal line, we call this our x-axis and we draw a little x at the end to indicate that that is our x-axis. So this is my x-axis. And my vertical line is my y-axis. This is my vertical line and tells me where my vertical position is and I draw a little y there. And so what we can do with our Cartesian plane is we can plot points on our Cartesian plane. So when we want to plot points, we call these points coordinates. Now, coordinates are made up of two numbers. All coordinates are made up of two numbers and we write them like this. We write a bracket, we write our first number, we write a comma, we write our second bracket number, and then we close our bracket. The reason why I've left it here is because those two numbers that I mentioned have specific names. The first number is called our x-coordinate. It tells you where you are horizontally on your Cartesian plane. The second number is our y-coordinate. This tells you where you are vertically, up or down. And so, for example, if we had a point 2, 1, the way we plot, plot this is we look at where these are two, look at these two numbers and we go, okay, the first number is our x-coordinate. That tells me where I am horizontally. So I'm going to look for where 2 is horizontally. So if you have a look here, 2 is over here on our x-axis. And then the second number is 1. That's our y-coordinate. That's where we are vertically. And so I'm going to look at my y-axis and look, going to look for 1, which is over here. Once I've done that, I can just plot this point by having a look at where these two particular uh, points intersect. So I'm going to have a look. Well, 2, it lines up. Line this up, line this up, and so here, this point over here would be 2, 1. Let's have a go in another example. Let's say, for example, we had negative 4, uh, negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2. Same thing. The first number is our x coordinate. So I'm just going to look at where negative 4 would be. Negative 4 is over here. And negative 2 is my y-coordinate. So y-coordinate of negative 2 is just down here for my y-coordinate. And so all I need to do is just line these two up. When I line these two up, it's this point over here. So negative 4, negative 2. And so that's how we plot points on a Cartesian plane. Let's just do one more, which is a little bit trickier. 5, 0. Now this one's a little bit trickier because if you notice, here we've got this 0 in the second number. But still exact same pattern. The first number is our x coordinate. So I'm going to look at my my Cartesian plane and look at where 5 is. So 5 is all the way out 
here for my x coordinate. And now I'm going to look at where y is for y is equal to zero. Now y is equal to zero. If you have a look, I've got five, four, three, two, one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Zero is just along this line here. So five zero is just going to be this point over here on the x axis. So that is five zero. Okay, so that's how we plot points on a Cartesian plane. That was a really quick summary of what we've done. Hopefully you might remember this from year nine uh, when we looked at last year, um, but that's how we plot points on a Cartesian plane. What we can actually use this for is we can use this to actually plot linear relationships. So let's actually give a definition for what a linear relationship is. A linear relationship is a set of ordered pairs. Now, ordered pairs is just another way of saying coordinates. So a linear relationship is a set of ordered pairs or coordinates, which when graphed gives a straight line. So what this actually looks like is if I imagine my Cartesian plane, if there is a rule that can rule that when I plot it on a Cartesian plane, it forms a straight line. So let's say it goes here, 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 here. And as you notice, I can draw a straight line through it. That is a linear relationship. Now let's imagine I drew that on, the, on that particular point. That is what a linear relationship is. If I can plot a set of points, or set of coordinates and it forms a straight line that is a linear relationship. Now this is usually given to us as a rule or equation in the form y is equal to, I'm going to write here, mx plus b. So all these examples that we're going to be looking at in a moment is going to look like this particular form. We're going to, it's going to look like y is equal to mx plus b. So we could have y is equal to 2x plus 1. m and b just represent two random numbers that we don't know. So how do we actually draw a linear relationship? The way we do this is we create a table of values and then we plot our points using that table of values. So what I have here is the steps that we're going to follow when we're creating, when we're drawing up a table of values. So when we're filling in the table of values, there's three steps I want you guys to follow. The first step is to draw a table of values with two rows. So what we want to do here is we want to fill it in with two rows, X and Y. So I'm going to draw in a table of values. I have two rows, X and Y. That's what we want. To, I want you guys to start off with. So first draw a table of values with two rows, X and Y. Then what you're going to do is you're going to fill in the table uh, fill in the x values with which you require. So for these examples, they're going to tell you to fill in a certain number of x values. So they might go, for example, they might say between negative 2 to 2. That, that's how we write in between negative 2 and 2. And so all you need to do is just fill in your x values. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You're filling in your x values in that first row. Okay, that's the second step. The third step is then what you want to do is you want to substitute the x values into the linear relationship or rule to find the y values. So what you're going to do is you're going to substitute each one of these rules, these numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, into the rule that you're given in that particular question. And so when you get those values, you substitute them in and you should get y values for them. And these should be able to be plotted into a Cartesian, into a linear relationship, a straight line on our Cartesian plane. So let's have a go at a few examples of doing this. I've got two examples here. So for, plot the following graphs by first completing a table of values. For these ones, we're just going to go from negative 2 to 2. And so here, let's just have a go at the first one. A. I'm going to get, create some space for myself. Y is equal to 2x minus 1. The first thing I'm going to do when I'm drawing a Cartesian, uh, filling in a table of values is I'm just going to draw my x and my y as my two rows. So first step, draw your two rows, x and y. And then the second step is then you fill in your x values with the, val uh, 
the values that you want to be able to substitute into. You can do any range. If the question gives you a specific range, so for example, negative two to two, use the range I give you. You could, go, you could even go from zero to 10, if you like, whatever range you like. So here I'm gonna go from negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So I filled in my X values I want to put in my cut into my rule. All I need to do now is then I just going to sub, I'm just going to substitute each one of these values individually into my rule. So my rule is this Y is equal to two X minus one. I'm going to substitute negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two into these rules individually. So let's do that. Let's go through this one at a time. The first time I'm going to substitute is negative two over here. So what I'm going to have is I substitute this into my rule. So I'm going to replace X with negative two. So here, what this looks like is Y is equal to two. Now, when you have two X written like that, there's a hidden operation. There's a hidden operation of multiplication. So that means I'm going to do two times negative two minus one. So that's what I get when I substitute my first value in. So when I substitute negative two, I'm just going to replace X with negative two. And just remember, whenever you see that number in front of the x, that means you are multiplying. So here I'm going to have 2 times negative 2. Well, here I've got a positive times a negative, so that would give me a negative. Negative 2 times 2 gives me, uh, 2 times 2 just gives me 4, so that's negative 4 minus 1, which will give me negative 5. So here I'm going to get minus 5. Okay, so that's all I do. Every For each one of these boxes, I'm just going to substitute the x value at the top in. So for the next box, for example, here I'm going to substitute negative 1 into x. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing. y is equal to 2 times minus 1 minus 1. So I'm going to do that multiplication. 2 times negative 1 will just give me negative 2 minus 1, which will give me negative 3. So here I get negative 3 for this second box. And just repeat the process. So let's do the next one together. So here, why am I substituting into my rule? I'm going to be substituting zero. So for this next one, I'm going to be going substituting zero into my rule. And so here I'm going to have y is equal to two times zero minus one, which would give me zero minus one, which is minus one. Excellent. Now, after you've done a few, you're going to start to notice a pattern. So hopefully you notice there's this pattern that happens every time I go across by one. For this one, every time I go across by one, I'm just adding two. So negative five to negative three just means I added two. Negative three to negative one just means I added two again. And to get the next one, I just need to add two. So negative one plus two will give me one. Hypothetically, I should have one here. So let's just check that by substituting. So I can still substitute just to check. So here for the next one, I'm gonna just substitute one into my x. So here I'm gonna have let me do my working out at the bottom here. Let's just check that. Y is equal to two times one minus one. Two times one just gives me two minus one, which gives me one, which is exactly what I expected. So for the last one, all I need to do is just add two along. So here, that's going to be three. So what I notice is after you've done a couple, you start to notice a pattern that you're adding to each time. And it makes it quite easy to actually fill in the rest. Now that you've done that, what you want to be able to do is actually sub, uh, put this on a Cartesian plane. What we want to do is we want to draw this onto our Cartesian plane. So what I want to do is I'm going to draw on my Cartesian plane, x and y. Now I want to be able to fit in all of my values, all my y values here. So I'm going to, I, that's why I've stretched it out a bit. Um, if you want to, you can just go, uh, what's it called? You can go, I'm going to go negative one, negative two, one, Two. I'm just going to fit in, fit in all my points. I've got uh, because I'm going down to negative five. Let's see if I can fit this in. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Oh, I'm off by a bit. Negative four, negative five. One, two, three, four is up there. All I need to do when I'm putting this on a Cartesian plane. Oh, so I've drawn my Cartesian plane. Sorry, let me try that again. I've drawn my Cartesian plane. Now you might be wondering, how do I get from this table of values that I've drawn over here to my Cartesian plane? Well, the way that we're going to do this is I'm just going to treat each one of my uh, columns as one coordinate. 
So the way that I plot this on the Cartesian plane is once I've drawn, got my table of values, I'm just going to go, okay, each one of my columns is just one coordinate. So here, what this first column, for example, tells me is that I have an x value of minus 2, and at minus 2, I have a y value of minus 5. That's just the same as saying I have a coordinate of negative 2, negative 5 on my line. My x value is minus 2. My y value is minus 5. And so here I'm just going to go negative 2, negative 5 and put a dot there. Okay, and we just repeat this process. Next column, I have negative 1, negative 3. So that tells me I have a point at negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 3. Okay, keep doing the process. Next one, the next coordinate I'm going to have is 0, minus 1. 0, minus 1 over here. Excellent. Next one is 1, 1. 1, 1 over here. And the final one is at 2, 3 which is over here. And so hopefully you've noticed that once I've plotted all these points, I can actually draw a straight line through them if I can get this. Nope. There we go. I can draw a straight line through this. Like so. And there we've got it. I've plotted my rule on the Cartesian plane. So this is y is equal to 2x minus 1. Okay, so that's our first example. Let's have a go at the second one. The next example, just going to give myself a bit more space before we move on to the next part. The next one was y is equal to, let's just try, check this, negative x plus 1. Negative x plus 1. We want to plot this in the Cartesian plane again. So what we want to do, exact same steps as before. We want to draw a table of values x, y. I'm drawing my two rows, x and y, and I'm going to fill in my x values. I'm going to go from negative 2 all the way to positive 2 again. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm just going to substitute each one of these values, each one of my x values, into my rule. So let's have a go at the first one. So the first one, I'm substituting negative 2. So for this first box, I'm just going to have y is equal to negative bracket negative 2. I'm just going to substitute negative 2 in plus 1. Now when I have a negative of a negative, all that does is it changes it from a negative to a positive. So here this just becomes 2 plus 1. So this just becomes, what's 2 plus 1? 3. Okay, first one done. Let's do the next one. Why am I going to substitute in this one? Instead of substituting negative 2, I'm going to be substituting negative 1. So here I'm going to have in your rule, I've got negative x plus 1, so I'm going to be negative, negative 1, plus 1. So here, this just becomes, negative over negative becomes a positive, so this is 1 plus 1, which gives me 2. Okay, so the third one, here, what we're going to have is y, what we're going to substitute, we're going to substitute x is equal to 0. So I'm going to substitute 0 into my rule over here. So I'm going to have y is equal to negative 0 plus 1. When we take a negative 0, it doesn't mean anything. It just means we've got, we've got 0. So that just means 0 plus 1, which is just 1. Now, hopefully, after you've done a few, you've noticed this pattern. What's happening each time we go across by 1? Each time I go across by 1, I'm just subtracting 1. And so here, the next one, I should expect to see 0 and then minus 1. So let's check the next one just to make sure I've got this down pat. I'm sub why am I substituting for this next one? I'm going to replace x with 1. And so here, for this one, I'm going to get y is equal to negative 1 plus 1. Now, because I have a positive 1 here, I'm substituting in. That just means I've got negative in the end. So it's just negative 1 plus 1, which gives me 0, exactly why I want it. Okay, cool. So I filled in my table of values. What I want to do now is then I want to actually have a go at Substitute. Oh, I want to have a go at um, drawing this on a Cartesian plane. Okay, so I've drawn. I want to draw this onto a Cartesian plane. So I've created my table of values. I'm going to now draw this on my Cartesian plane. If you remember, what we said was each one of these uh, columns is one coordinate. So this one here is just going to be negative two, three. This next one over here is going to be negative one, two. This one here is going to be 0, 1. This one here is going to be 1, 0. And this one here is going to be 2, negative 1. 
So I'm just going to read it off like that as I'm when I want to find the coordinates. So all I need to do is just draw this on my Cartesian plane. I'm going to go. y x I'm going to go from negative 2 negative 1 I've got 0 1 2 and I go from 3 all the way down so 1 2 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 I'm just going to put these points on my Cartesian plane the first one was negative 2 3 which is up here then the next one was negative 1 2 which is over here 0 1 over here 1 0 and 2, negative 1, and as you've noticed, ooh, close that, when I put this on my Cartesian plane, I end up getting a straight line as well. There we go. And so there, we've created our, we've drawn another linear relationship. Yay! So here, this is y is equal to negative x plus 1. Okay, cool. So when we're drawing a, uh, a linear relationship, what we want to do is we want to first create a table of values. And so we want to create, draw up the table with X and Y, fill in our X values, and then we substitute each one of those X values into our rule. Once we've done that, when we're plotting this on our Cartesian plane, we want to read each column as one coordinate. And then we plot those coordinates on our Cartesian plane and we draw a line through it. Okay. One final thing we're going to do is we're going to be applying these linear relationships into solving a few different problems. So here we're going to be constructing a table and graph for interpretation. So we're going to be applying our linear relationships into a few examples. So let's have a look at this question. So when we're reading a question, I want you guys to underline the key words. So here, an electrician charges $50 for service call and $60 an hour for labor. So I'm going to underline in here a few key words. First word I'm going to underline. We're charging this electrician. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be an electrician. It could be a plumber. But the first important piece of information is $50 for a service call. So the first thing is he charges 50, that first $50. It doesn't matter whether or not he makes his way out there. He's charging $50. Next bit is then he charges, he or she charges $60 an hour for labor. So in each hour after that, we're charging $60. So the first thing we want to do in this question is we want to complete the table of values. So if you have a look here, instead of doing X and Y, the top column is the number of hours that they've worked, and the bottom column is the cost that has for those particular number of hours. So let's fill this in using this question, using the information that we got here. So in the number of hours, first, the first um, number of hours is zero. Now, how much would it cost if you were uh, hiring this electrician for zero hours? We well, have a look at this. Um, question, it's actually $50 because this $50, even if they haven't worked a single hour, they're still going to charge you $50. So here, what I'm going to write is $50. So for zero hours, it costs us $50 to hire this particular electrician. Then every hour after that, they're going to charge us $60. So if, uh, if they've worked for one hour, how much is it going to cost us all together? Well, we've got that $50 that we started off with, but we've also got $60 for one hour's work. So we're just going to add those together, and here I'll get $110. Okay, we're just going to keep repeating this process. Next one, for two hours, what do I need to do to on, on top of that $110? I just need to add another $60. So here this becomes $170, and hopefully you started to notice the pattern. The next one is $230, then we go $290, then $350. Okay, cool. Hopefully this is quite straightforward to fill in this table of values. So you just have to be very careful with what the question gives you and understanding what it's actually saying. Okay, the next part is we want to plot a graph of cost against the number of hours. So what we want to do is just put this onto our Cartesian plane. Now this one, notice here, all of the number of hours is bigger than zero, right? So for my particular um, Cartesian plane, I'm just going to draw the top right quadrant. I'm going to draw the top right quadrant. So here I'm going to have N for the number of hours. And here I'm going to have C for the cost. So here it goes from 1, it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the cost, well, I'm just going to make sure I've got an even scale, just like we did with our data topic that we just finished. I'm just going to go from 0, 
or C, I'm going to put dollars here. And I'm just going to go from zero. I've got one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm just going to go up by hundreds each time. So I'm going to go 200, 300, 400. And so here, all we need to do is just plot these values in. So after uh, uh, one hour, oh, after zero hours, he charges them $50, so right in between. After one hour, it's 110, which is roughly here. After two hours is 170, which is roughly here, or I'm gonna, I'm just guessing around here. Um, after three hours is 230, which should be roughly around here. After four hours, it's 290, which is close to here. And after five hours, it's 350, which is over here. So hopefully you've noticed it kind of forms a straight line and I'm just gonna draw, grab out my ruler and just draw a line through those ones. So there we go. That is the rule that we have there. Excellent. Okay, cool. Okay, next part. So that's how we draw our um, this particular linear relationship based on this question. So this is part B done. Part C, use the graph to determine the cost for four and a half hours of work. So for this one, just like we did with our data topic in before, what we want to do is just read off our graph and find these particular values. So here, I'm going to actually go, okay, four and a half is somewhere around here. So I just need to go up to here and just read off that value. Now, we this my graph isn't super accurate, but if I did four and a half hours, that would roughly be, oh, hang on, let me guess, that's roughly $320. So that's just a reading off my graph. So if you were able to draw this with a few more val a few more accurate, um, what's it called, vertical uh, li lines, just so you can separate um, your values, so it's not just going from zero to one hundred to two hundred to three hundred to four hundred, you'd probably be able to read this off a little bit better. Um, but I can actually notice that well, four and a half is actually just right between four and five, so I just need to add in halfway, which is just another thirty dollars between two hundred ninety. Part two, how long? Will it take for the electrician to uh, how long the yeah. use the graph to determine how long the electrician will work for two hundred and sixty dollars? Now this time, unlike this previous question where we got told he worked for four and a half hours, we want to find out how long it takes for him to get six two hundred and sixty dollars. So two hundred and sixty dollars is roughly around here, and I go here, read down. Okay, that's roughly three and a half hours. So three point five hours. So for these questions, you just want to be able to identify what values you're given and be able to read, identify how to find that off a graph. So for this question, I went for the first one, I went to where four and a half hours was and I went up to my line and I read off. So I went in this direction and went off and found my cost. For the second one, I had to actually start at $260 and then go to my graph and then read down to find what the time was. So depending on what the question gives you, you're going to need to read off the graph in a few different ways. So after watching this video, there's a few questions that I want you guys to have a go at. If you need to go back to, to any part in this video to have help you out, you can do so. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully this lockdown won't be too long and we won't have to keep doing these online lessons. But until next lesson, Year 10s, I will see you guys then. Bye.